not taking that chance. Amen. When I stand before the Lord. Amen. I'd rather be broke. My soul is more important to me. I'd rather be hungry. I've been hungry before. I'd rather be living in a car if I could even live in a car. I've lived in a car before. Amen. Look, somebody like, well, God gonna make a way. What if he don't? The Hebrew boy said, hey, we know God can do this. But even if he doesn't, let it be known. Let it be known that I'm not serving your God. Let it be known that I died serving the true and the living God. Let it be known. That's it. Yeah, like having a house and cars and money to do stuff and all that, that's fun. But God gave it to me. So how am I going to sell the God that blessed me with it out? It's not even a question. Come get it. Because you can have that, but you can't have my profession. My profession is sound. I know who holds my future. All you can do is put me closer to the one that created me, that gave me life. That's all you can do. Nobody is scared of you. You block me and ban me on the internet. I don't care. I was preaching before there was an internet. Take the car. I was preaching before I had a car. They don't know. We ruin your reputation. It's too late. <laughs> Nobody care, man. I'm... Amen. Look at somebody and say, purge. Purge. Oh. oh. Look at somebody and say, purge. It's <laughs> an accident. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash purge. Dot PDF. When we was growing up, purging, you know. Well, not when we was, we didn't do that. You know, Kojic wasn't a purging church. You know, that was women pastors. Always had the purging services. Folks throwing up. And back when I used to speak at churches where women were pastors, I don't do that no more. They don't call me no more either because I rebuke them. Tell them, say, you need to sit down. So they stopped inviting me. But when I used to go and try to preach there, and whenever we would get ready for altar call, just all these buckets would come. They people bringing buckets to the stage and pails. You know what a pail is? It's a bucket with a handle. <laughs> That's what it is. So they would be bringing them all to the altar, and I'd be like, you know, I'd always be like, okay, what is going on? Oh, did we get ready to purge? And that meant throwing up. So everybody just throwing up in buckets. And I was like, why are they throwing up? First of all, that's unhealthy. Amen. Amen. You can mess, you know, you can mess your throat up throwing up. That's acid. They throwing up in the buckets. Church stank. <laughs> Vomit stank. They throwing up there. Why are they throwing up? They're getting the nest of the demons out. The nest of the demons out. So is the demon in the bucket now? <laughs> Sitting in the bucket? <laughs> I mean, that's his nest. Is there eggs in the bucket? <laughs> I didn't understand. It just, it, I didn't understand. Elder. I didn't make sense. 
So I just, I, what is that? And I remember that when I stopped speaking, because it always happened when there were women pastors, the spitting, and when you pray on the altar, just slob and snot and spitting and choking, just all kind of choking. Choke, I heard every choke noise that there is. You know, there's a lot of choke noises. <laughs> Gagging and choking. And so I said, I never, I said, Lord, what is going on? And the Lord spoke to me and told me, he said, well, when a woman is in leadership over a church, over the men, as well, you know, then the order is perverted. And that brings the spirit of a python into the church. And the python spiritually are coiling themselves around people's necks and choking them. So I ain't going back. <laughs> you, don't need, you ain't making my job harder. I got to do the truth on here, but that's already hard. I'm not doing it and snakes breaking out. So, so yeah, so that's why I stopped doing it. But that's what that was. It was just the coiling around the neck and the spitting, and they call that purging. You got to get it out. And it's sin, spitting sin up and sin coming out and sin. And it's just, this doesn't make sense. That's not purging. That's vomiting. Amen. Amen. And when you casting demons out and dealing with demons or whatever, I don't let folks spit at me and cough and gag and stuff. You rebuke the devil and then you, you, you secure the mind of the person. Don't let the devil make you think this is necessary. You're not tearing this body up tormenting this body. But folks like to see it because it's a show. It's, a, it's just a whole show. Folk on the altar, ah, yeah, I can't just coughing and choking. But we ain't, we ain't doing that. So that's not the purge. This is what the Bible calls purging, what I'm preaching. And purging is very necessary. Amen. The definition of purge is rid someone or something of an unwanted quality, condition, or feeling. That's a purge. To rid someone of an unwanted quality, condition, or feeling. Like that movie, The Purge. It was an unwanted quality. They would get rid of folks. But the condition or feeling. This is what a purge is. So if there's something about you that needs to go, you need to purge. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Anybody ever get sick of themselves? Is that just me? Anybody ever just get sick of themselves? I'm sick of you and this. Is that just me? Okay, okay. We got some humans in here. Yeah, sometimes you get tired of your bad choices and bad decisions. Yeah. Especially when it's a pattern and you keep doing it. Yeah. Just get sick of that. Yeah, so you have to purge that out. That's an unwanted quality or condition or feeling. Amen? Yeah. To free someone or something from an unwanted quality, condition, or, free, uh, or uh, feeling. So you're going to rid or you're going to free someone of it. But that's what a purge is. So when you go to feeling like you can't stand yourself, it's time for a purge. Amen. Amen. And you got to be in control of that. Amen. You done watched all four seasons of Snowfall. How many seasons is it? I don't know. That's your show. You are an adamant believer. That can't be your show. Look, all right, look. You didn't finish the season and now you feel dirty and rotten. You feel just stank with yourself. You know you do. You done watched all the Fridays. You had a Friday marathon and invited people over for all that cussing and weed smoking and stupidity. Just, just the Negrodom element is so much inwardy. I'm not talking about them saying it. I'm talking about their behavior. If they could have named the movie that, they would have. Just the N-word. But now you full of it because you watched all of it. Pop popcorn to enjoy it. 
Now you're carnal, you feeling carnal, you need to purge all of that out of you. You need to get before the Lord. Amen. Amen. All women, you ain't off the hook. You, done, you got your stuff you like to watch too. You done seen every angle of Morris Chestnut's chest. Because all you got to do is watch a Tyler Perry movie and you going to see bare chest. That's his thing. He loves that. Greasy chest. Yeah, you need to purge. Amen. You went to, the, to a wedding and the reception the DJ was saving folks' lives. <laughs> DJ played Thriller, and you was all around the cake doing your zombie moves. <laughs> you remember all of them. Y'all had a whole line. Everybody remembered them. Vincent Price done prophesied over the whole reception. He prophesied. Grizzly grooms from every tomb. You and that just... Yeah. And then can't sleep. You need to purge. You need to... Can I just... Hey, man. I mean, some folks so saying you can't preach to them. Oh, I'd never do that. Oh, I'd never do that. Oh, I'd never do that. But you spent, you was on the phone so long gossiping your battery died while the phone was plugged up. Your electric bill is high. The meter was just going. So much, you done gossiped that long. You need to hang the phone up and purge. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody say, we're bringing the purge back. You know, this was a message that they preached to us when we was growing up. It wasn't even, I mean, it was no question. Everybody that's in sin, come up before I start calling y'all names. Whole church run up. Am I tell, what? See, these folk, they couldn't handle that. They couldn't handle that. Before I start <laughs> And everybody just jogged to the altar. Remember that elder? Wasn't nobody playing? Yes, I'm coming. <laughs> See, we're not think, I'm not doing that, but you need to purge yourself. Right. Amen. Amen. This is in the Bible, and I preach what's in the Bible. 2 Timothy 2 and 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. But they are the hierarchy of the church. You got the pastor, you got the deacons, the elders, and the different ones in the hierarchy of the church. There is a hierarchy of the church. So you can't get no amen in 2023. The church is in our hearts. No, it's not. No, no. I can't fit this building in my heart. And I promise you this building is right here. Yeah, quit saying that, man. I just quit saying that. That's stupid. You got you got hurt in church or something, and now you're trying to delete the whole process. And God left the church and he's returning for the church. And this right here, he's describing the church. Gold, silver, uh, you know, wood, earth. But then he says, uh-oh, there's some in the great house that are vessels to honor. And there are some to dishonor. Yeah. Don't mean they're going to hell. Just mean they act dishonorably. Ooh, I'm preaching it here. Folk don't like that kind of word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just always in some kind of trouble in the church. You're the troublemaker. Just a vessel of dishonor. You go to heaven, but does heaven have a ghetto? Some folk better hope. They're going to be on assistance in heaven. 
How do you get to heaven on assistance? You gonna walk the streets of plated gold. You can't walk the full ghost. <laughs> but, but in a great house, there are all these vessels, all kinds of vessels. My job is to try to make, get us all to be honorable vessels, include myself. That's my job as a pastor. That's my job as a Christian. But yeah, there's dishonorable, you know, there's going to be crazy folk in the church. There's going to be folks that can't hear me. We've done that lesson. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The quality of believer that we are is totally up to us. The quality of believer that you are is totally up to you. That's, that's up to us. The way we behave determines what kind of vessel we are. Can I? Hey, man. Y'all, y'all get with me now. We, this will go faster. Yeah. So it's up to us. We read the word, we'll know the word. If we don't read it, we'll be taken advantage of. <laughs> we pray and talk to the Lord. We'll learn his voice. He'll respond. We don't talk to him. All we know is what we want to do and what we think is right. That's a miserable life. That's our choice. We receive from the Lord if we trust him and believe. If we have a problem with that, we ain't going to receive much. That's our choice. Quality of believer that we are is totally up to us. The way we behave determines what kind of vessel we are. James says it like this. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this man shall be what? Blessed, Blessed in his deed. Not just hearing, but doing. Amen. And you don't just do without trying to do. <laughs> when you hear it, you have to get excited about it. You have to come to that maturity level where you can walk out of here and say, man, pastor had a Bushido blade and sliced me up this Sunday. But you know what? I needed it. That's a maturity level you have to have. God has called us all in different ways, but that call will reside in the type of vessel that we choose to be. So he's called many of us to different things, but it's going to reside in that vessel. And that vessel is going to be what you choose for it. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. That's your choice. We're in an earthen vessel, but you can surrender that vessel to the power of God and allow the power of God to feel it. Feel my cup, Lord. Oh. Remember that? Yeah, we used to sing them songs. Let it overflow. Fill it up. Fill it up with what? With your power. That's going to make me a better vessel. The more power from God that I have. Now if it's full of what I want to do, then it's some old toilet. I don't want to be no commode. Amen. I want to be a vessel full of the power of God. Some in the church are vessels of honor because of the posture they maintain. Don't mean they do everything right. Don't mean they're perfect. That person doesn't exist. But that posture. When they're wrong, they know they're wrong and they get it right. Or somebody come tell them they're wrong and they get on their knees and get it right. They don't try to find something wrong with the person that came and told them something wrong. 
It's the wrong posture. Others are vessels of dishonor because they never fully submit to God's sound doctrine. Be in church their whole life and leave some stuff off the list. Y'all, it's, it's, it's a list that's complete. We have to adhere to God's sound doctrine. We don't get to leave some stuff off. Because it's not in our personality. No, our personality has to change and adhere to God's sound doctrine. Amen. First Thessalonians 4 and 4, that every one of you should know how to do what? Man, possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Take your vessel from the devil. Possess it. Sanctify it. Somebody don't like this message. You don't like when you don't like when God is trying to make you act right and act better and get somewhere. Everybody in here ought to be trying to get somewhere. Yeah. Amen. Somebody still thinking about man, they're gonna lock everything down. I need to start growing some tomatoes or something. They're gonna lock it off. Well, they're gonna lock it down, but they locked it down before, and you here right now. We got through. Amen. And y'all know. Y'all pastor is a G, and the G stand for G. So when they go to messing with the church, you already know. Ain't nobody playing around here. Amen. Amen. We're going to fight for the right to do whatever we need to do. Amen. If I got to go pick Greg Abbott up myself, drive him up here. Two G's. Let's go. But that's what we're going to do. Amen. And it's going to be bad. If they shut everything down, it's going to be real bad because too many people know the truth. So now you got a fight and war. You, you basically have chaos and mutiny. You're going to have people fighting. And don't you be worried about nothing. Amen. You better keep on living. We're going to keep on working on this building over here. We're going to keep going until they say you can't go no more. And then we're going to have to discuss it. Questions? Folks didn't, you know, folks don't know it's the end when it's the end. Like, they talked about the end their whole life. And then the end comes and they don't know it's the end. <laughs> Strong delusion. Preach the good healing word. But in the end, ain't no more healing, elder. Can I keep going? You know this message is going to be five minutes when I upload it to YouTube. <laughs> I take all this out. <laughs> Let me preach some other stuff. Hold on. Look. Second Timothy 2 and 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and what? Prepared. Prepared unto every good work. If a man therefore does what? Does what? Does what? Purge himself. Look at somebody and say, purge yourself. If a man purge himself. That's deep, y'all. Watch. Purging does not require buckets and towels for vomiting and spitting. It's not a physical purge. It's a spiritual one. When we purge ourselves, we forsake certain behaviors, contaminants, and desires 
by applying the blood of Christ and power of God's spirit that lives in us. That's purging. Turn it off. Stop watching. Stop talking. Stop saying that. Stop doing that. Don't go there no more. That's purging. You're getting something that's unwanted out of your life. Hebrews 9 and 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered against himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serving the living God. So here's another purge, a version of it, purging your conscience from dead works. It means after you keep doing something for so long, now your conscience has picked it up and made it habitual. You got to have your conscience purged. Yeah, don't come telling me about every time I stop. Every time I stop, I find myself doing it again. You need to purge your conscience. Your conscience picked it up and attached it to your character. Made it a part of who you are and how you think. Can I keep going? Yeah. The Bible is clear that a man is able to purge himself. We just read that, right? Yeah. This means that we can be delivered from behaviors and unclean spirits by purging ourselves through fasting and prayer. Yeah. In the Old Testament, most, I mean in the New Testament, most of those people didn't know anything about fasting and prayer and the power of the Holy Ghost. So yeah, there were way more demonic manifestations then. But some of these demons, you ain't finna waste my time. I know what the problem is. It ain't no demon. It ain't a demon till I go to working on you. Now you done open yourself up for one because you believe you have one. And it was never about that. You need some fasting and prayer. Amen. I'm not casting a demon out of somebody that eat cake all day. I'm sorry. Oh, you ain't wasted my time. You wasted my time. Somebody, oh, well, I'm offended because I definitely eat cake all day. This means <laughs> just as God cannot dwell in an unclean temple, a demonic entity cannot dwell in a clean temple. Clap for that. Clap for that. If you clean yourself up, ain't no demon. Hiding. You're clean yourself over here in the car. I'll just wait. <laughs> I know I'm preaching. Yeah, you ain't gonna hide in there if you clean yourself up. Don't come to church trying to clean yourself up. We ain't gonna have a line of folks I gotta pray for and everybody growling and ghouls and goblins. You gotta stop doing some of this stuff. Amen. Push that plate away and get in that secret place and talk to the Lord. Amen. A lot of these folk get demons cast out of them and they don't have no prayer ethic or no reading the word ethic. So guess what happens? The demon just waiting at the door. After you shake everybody's hands, he's the last hand you're going to shake. Welcome back. You don't have no way to keep. God can't. God ain't dwelling in an unclean temple. Devil ain't dwelling in a clean one. So clean it up. Self deliverance is possible with the power of the Holy Ghost. That stuff you used to do that you don't do no more. That's called deliverance. Anybody got stuff that they used to do that they don't do no more? That's called deliverance. 
And then nobody have to cast that out either. Ain't nobody cast nicotine out of you. You stop smoking. Spirit of black and mild, ain't no spirit. You stop buying them. Amen. Cast out an old coffin spirit. <laughs> there he is. He's out. The black and mild. Spirit of Swisher. Get that old Swisher out. <laughs> Stop smoking. Amen. Some folks didn't need a 10-step program. You didn't need to go and enroll in Alcoholics Anonymous. The Holy Ghost came and delivered you. Set you free and you don't touch the stuff no more. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Nobody got a cast jack out of you, wild turkey. What is that? It's just the wild what is wrong? Let me stop. Cast that old <laughs> That turkey. Come out! <laughs> okay. Okay. That's enough. All right. Okay. Okay. Amen. Now, sometimes it's a demon. You got to cast the demon out, deal with the demon, all that. But I'm telling y'all, most of the time, it's just folk acting bad. Amen. First Corinthians 5 and 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a what? New lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Cast out, purge out the old leaven so you can be a new lump. To be a true and useful vessel of honor, we must forsake the things that are dishonorable. Sound doctrine teaches us how to line up with God's morality to genuinely be a vessel of honor. We must always strive for this, amen? amen? That's why we're here. The preaching and teaching of sound doctrine builds our faith so we can continue purging ourselves instead of getting complacent with being a dishonorable vessel. You know you can get complacent and just believe this is how you're going to be? And you just some old jive Christian? You got complacent? But preaching and teaching of sound doctrine, when the preacher's preaching, that make you go deal with stuff. Amen. All right, now I got to quit that. Amen. Every time I get mad, I cuss somebody out. I got to quit that if I'm going to be a Christian. Amen. 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 Talking about folks and gossiping, I got to quit that. Amen. 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Preach the word, be instant. When? In season and out of season. He told Timothy to reprove Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and what? Doctrine. That's what the preacher's supposed to do. All of that. So sometimes you come in here and yeah, Brother Corey went in this morning. Y'all did did he go in? And sung you happy and all of that. Yep. And then here come the message. Here come the acts to reprove rebuke. Amen. And that's church. That's why we come. I want to, I, I, I get to feel good and then I get to get worked on. Amen. And it's working on all of us. Second Timothy 2 and 22. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a what? A pure heart. I love these passages right here. Some of my favorite. This Paul teaching Timothy. Youthful lust are sins that the enemy sowed into our flesh in our youth. Amen. How many of you remember your youth? 
Seemed like we was just in a free for all, just making it up as we went with no instruction. Amen. No instruction. Have as many girlfriends as you can have as a teenage boy. That's what I learned. Amen. Wasn't nobody teaching. Oh my gosh. We didn't have youth pastors, we had youth ministers. We sat in church and got pinched and told to shut up. We didn't understand what was going on. Amen. Right. Amen. That's just, I, I'm just being honest. I was on the instruments playing. And everybody, all the women winking at me, young and old, because I was talented. I was the Ralph Tresvant of the service. <laughs> That's what it was, man. I don't know. I mean, hey. The other said, does that make me Bobby Brown? Because we was together. <laughs> yeah. We got in so much trouble, me and the elder, man. That's all we did. I mean, we thought that was church. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Y'all, some of y'all too young. Yeah, so we didn't know. We were just, you know. So all them youthful things that happen in your youth, as, you, as a youth, they start coming back when you get older. All of it. And God allows it to come back so you can deal with it. Amen. The enemy sold them. Want to take advantage. That's why we, you know, we hardcore here about these young folks. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We don't have them boyed up, girl up, booed up in here as no teenagers. Boyfriend and girl, we don't want to run experiments with them. Yeah. Amen. Because most of us are failed experiments. Yeah. Amen. Let me tell you how this is supposed to go. Because I know, I know the wrong way. So we're trying to help you not take the wrong road. Do, it a be do a better job than we did. You got information we didn't have. Yeah, we strict. We're supposed to be. Amen. Yeah, I ain't letting my sons go out collecting phone numbers. Let my daughter go out with leggings on and not covered up. You ain't wearing leggings out in public. You ain't covering that up. Now my daughter, she grown, I don't know what she wearing, but when in, in my house, I don't care how tiny your buddy is, put something over that. That ain't innocent. You know, folks, when they little, they think, Trying to keep stuff from getting sold into your flesh that you got to deal with for the rest of your life because you did something dumb as a teenager. I know I'm preaching. Thanks. These sins mature into more grave sins with greater consequences as we get older. We must address these sins and be purged from them so they do not ruin our future. Amen. First John 5 and 18. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning. But he who was born of God protects him. And the evil one, what? Not touch you. Paul says flee. Meaning leave. You know what flee leave? Flee means? That means get up out of that. Flee. Leave them. That means leave them. He didn't say you had to find a deliverance ministry or someone to cast it out. He said flee. Folk asking it all the time, brother, we want to come, but are, are you a deliverance ministry? We're a ministry. I mean, but I need somebody that specializes. What's wrong with you? Yeah, well, I preach sound doctrine. If you apply sound doctrine, I promise you, you'll be all right. 
Coke wants special attention. He said flee, which means it's under our authority through the Holy Spirit to leave alone. If he said flee. If he said flee, that means it's fleeable. Yeah. Flee. Leave it alone. Look at somebody and say, leave it alone. Stop doing it. James 4 and 7, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and what? So not only are you fleeing, if you submit yourself to God and resist him, he'll flee. Now two things that's fleeing in opposite directions, you're able to flee, you're able to make the devil flee. You should be all right. Look at somebody say, you're going to be all right. Amen. He said flee. That means it's under our authority through the Holy Spirit to leave alone. If we have the power to follow after the right things, then we must also have the power to flee the wrong things. (laughs) Somebody didn't get that. If you got the power to follow after the right things, then you have the power to flee the wrong things. The devil wants us to believe that we are under his control and power and we are not. He's been defeated. The devil is a defeated foe. We're not under his power. We're not under his authority. He don't have the ability to make you do anything. He don't have the ability to jump in your body without you bringing him in your body. You got to give him access. If we decide to live right, and keep our hearts pure, we can be vessels set aside for the master's use. Colossians 2 and 15. He spoiled principalities and powers. You know what that means? He defeated them all. When he died on the cross, he spoiled all principalities and powers. And he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That means he has victory over every entity. So you shouldn't have an entity crisis. This is good. Summary. All people that sin are not possessed by demons. Most people that believe they are controlled by demons are not. They are more than likely just conditioned to sin and have not purged themselves. You keep sinning for a long time, you're going to get stronger and stronger in that sin. The sin is going to take over. Then you'll be guided and led by the sin. You think it's a demon? No, that's your sin. Your flesh is out of control because you didn't control it. Sure, there are cases where demons manifest in people. We're not denying that. But most of the time, look at somebody say most of the time. Most of the time, it's just folks sinning repeatedly without purging themselves. Fasted in prayer. Avoiding the environments and atmospheres and putting your foot down and making the decision to change are the ways we purge ourselves. Stay out of the juke joint and your foot won't be tapping. Amen. Quit searching on Apple Music in the wrong category. Amen. And old dates won't be popping up in your mind. Oh, boyfriends and girlfriends. Hey. Can I tell the truth in here? Amen. Think about something else and you won't eat cake all day. Amen. Read the Bible instead of the recipe book. Quit watching the diners. What's that show? (laughs) 
That's why I'm preaching this message. Everybody know the name. What's the name? Diners, drive-ins, and... You, did you hear that? It sounded like the, when Corey was singing. They went into a worship, Corey, over the Donna's drives and... And correct me. No, 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 no. Yes. I know that's the show y'all watched when you fasted. See, look at that. Look at that. I'm fasting, so I'm just gonna watch someone else partake of it since I can't. This brother be stopping at some good old eating places. Yeah, quit watching all the food and recipes and junk, and you won't be addicted to cake and sweets. Amen. Listen, y'all, and I'm saying this. Cake and sweets, when you, that stuff makes your mind mush. You can't think straight on cake. We need to make a shirt. You can't. You eating bad, you can't think right. You're gonna make dumb decisions. It's okay, you don't have to clap. Fasting and prayer, and not going to those environments, not, not putting your foot down, making the decision to change are the ways we purge ourselves. We must believe that we can be free and cleansed from sins and behaviors that cause us to be dishonorable vessels. It's our duty to periodically purge ourselves. Look at somebody say, it's our duty to periodically purge. That's your duty. So I don't need to have a purging service. That's your duty. Amen. It's our duty to periodically purge ourselves when we feel we have gotten too carnal in our thinking and behaviors. When we feel sinful or fleshly or we feel far from who we know we should be in Christ, then it's time to purge. Amen. Amen. We must flee the things that are hindering us and be cleansed by the washing and regeneration of the word. If we can purge ourselves and have pure intentions, then we can be vessels of honor in the church and be used mightily by God in these end times. Amen. Amen. Second Peter 1 and 5 says, And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance. What is temperance? What is temperance? To, to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, which is love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten mm, that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fail. Everyone stand to your feet. Purge! We ain't getting no buckets and don't you throw up on my floor. <laughs> but I'm going to open the altar up for all those that need the purging. And we're just going to purge and that's just letting it go. Letting stuff go. Letting it go. Whatever it is, let it go. Purge. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this truth. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come. Father God, we know that we're just humans in flesh, wrapped in flesh. And we fall sometimes. Father God, we fall prey to certain things. But some things that come... They develop a pattern in us. They develop over time. It just becomes something that becomes a struggle. Then it just becomes something we get used to. Then it becomes something we stop praying about and stop even 
really having the level of concern that we should have about it. And these things sit in our lives just to twist our path and make us do things that we shouldn't and make us cause things to happen that we that shouldn't have happened and all of these things and the enemy just has his claws into these things but father god we come right now willing and ready to purge purge ourselves of these things father god purge ourselves letting them go all these things that are contaminating us as believers that are messing with our walk messing with our faith messing with our families messing with our our bodies messing with our emotional mental state father god we come to purge today help us to purge father god let these things go come on lift your hands up we let it go right now and we pray and ask you god that the place that it had that you would take it the place in our lives that it occupied that you would occupy it we place you there God some of it was youthful lust some of it were things that started way back whatever but none of that matters help us father God to get it under control temperance and help us father God to be rid of it purge in the name of Jesus we give it to you we give it to you. We want to walk the way you want us to walk. We want to live the way you want us to live. We want to give it to you. So we give it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Take it, occupy its space. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Like the song said, surrender. We surrender. We surrender. We surrender. We surrender. In the name that is above every name we pray. And thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you go to your seats, let me tell you something. I just taught you something. I did. And this altar call, I taught you how to purge. You have to do this. This has to be a regular thing. This has to be something that you do when you know you need to do it. When your life is on hold because of something that's in your way or something that you're doing you have to do this you have to purge and it's only up to you it's up to you amen hug somebody tell them say go purge go purge I surrender all sing it PJ to Jesus sing with him. I surrender all Let's lift 